Hi, it's Rob. Now, I don't know if you've ever said this lie to yourself. Um, I'm sorry about my um, very white face. This is my British tan. Uh, I don't know if you've ever said to yourself or to others that you're too busy. Well, frankly, I think that's a nonsense. I think it's um, a lie. Uh, I think that um, you've probably been blown out by someone in the past who's told you that they're too busy, whether that's a date or you know, someone you're trying to bag for a business deal or a potential client, partner. But the reality is no one is too busy for the things that are most important to them. You're not too busy for your children. You're not too busy for your business or the things that you love to do the most. You will find the time. And so it is for your clients, you know, your followers, your fans, your staff, the people that you're trying to leverage, influence and partner with. We will all find time. In fact, that's naturally what we do. We spend our time naturally organizing and prioritizing according to what's most important to us in our life. And then we delegate, delete, delay, you know, procrastinate on all the things that aren't that important to us. Now, there may be a disconnect between what we think is important to us and what really is important to us inside. Um, but how people spend their time shows you what's important to them. So if you're trying to influence someone, you know, trying to date someone, trying to get a client, you know, it's not what they say, it's what they do and where they go and where they focus. So, you know, if they're too busy to take a call for you or spend some time with you, it means you need to make yourself more important to them. You know, whether that's offering better benefits or, you know, really trying to get to see the world from their point of view and you understand how they think and what they want and what their values are. And then you can match what you're trying to influence them or sell to them with what's most important to them. Now, probably about four years ago, once I started to get a lot of messages through social media and started to get more demands on my time because, you know, for decades no one wanted to know who I was or wanted any advice from me or anything like that um, and of course I used to be a bit weak and a bit wimpy and if anyone wanted anything from me or made, anything was uncomfortable just oh sorry I'm too busy and it would normally be in a text or something and you know deep down I knew that wasn't the truth and, I, and it didn't make me feel very comfortable it was just um, I was just sort of I was avoiding conflict um, but it doesn't help a future situation. I think we all know we're being lied to when someone says, oh, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. So I, I kind of made this commitment to, instead of saying too busy, saying thanks for the opportunity, um, I've got more things than I um, can you know, physically handle, or I'm not taking on any more opportunities, or this looks like a good thing to do, but not now. Maybe you could reconnect with me in six months, or right now I'm just not in that space, I'm not interested in this thing. You know, I'm trying to politely say, you know, no, instead of keeping people hanging on or making them feel, uh, you know, making excuses. I just don't think it's smart to make excuses. You wouldn't want people to make excuses to you. If you put excuses out to the world, it'll give you a load of bullshit back. If you put truth out to the world, it'll give you truth back. So, um, you know, you're, you shouldn't be too busy to make a living. You shouldn't be too busy making a living to make a fortune. You should never be too busy to do the things that you love, merging your passion and profession, you know, spending time with your family, you know, whatever it is that's important to you. Um, you know, like I tend to be having nothing to do, everything to do, nothing to do, everything to do. You know, really bored, really busy. I tend to bounce from those extremes. And um, I'm writing my book at the moment. I ran five or six days of courses in the last 10 days. Some of those were a lot, were a lot of travel. I'm currently traveling to go and watch Strictly Come Dancing. Uh, and then I find out that I um, managed to get an interview with John Barnes, my all-time football hero for the podcast. All-time legend, John Barnes. Um, I'm going to interview with one Mike, not two, so then I can give him a quick kiss. I can't wait to interview John Barnes. Now, you know, I've got to leave at 6.30 a.m., get up there, sort of 10, 10.30 to 11.30 is the meeting, um, and then someone's kindly um, given me a, a, a guest ticket in the box at Liverpool to watch Liverpool. And um, whilst this all sounds exciting, because it is exciting, please, there's first world problems, but, you know, like, I'm going to be back really late. I'll probably suffer the next day. I've got a lot on. I want to make sure I get my book finished. I've got a lot to prepare for the week after, because I've got some book critics coming to critique my book. But I've got time to drop everything 
uh, to go and meet my all-time hero, John Barnes, to go and watch Liverpool hopefully beat Southampton. So you've always got time for the things that are important to you in your life. So remember that. So make sure you're making time for the important things. And then when important things come along and you're busy, stop what you're doing that's not important and make time for that thing that's really important. Because sometimes the things that you want to do in your life don't come according to your agenda. They come according to when they want to come to you. And sometimes you have to cancel some meetings, clear some diaries. Of course, the counterbalance of that is when you've made commitments, keep these commitments. Um, because I see a lot of people out there being consistent and saying yes and then no and then yes and then no and then committing and then decommitting and then being really inconsistent and jumping from thing to thing. And all they teach you is that you can't trust them even if, you know, otherwise they seem like a trustworthy person. So sure, honor your commitments, but the things that are most important to you make room for. And don't bullshit people. You know, tell them the truth. Um, so if it's not right at this time, it's not right at this time. Um, I don't like to say no to opportunities because there was a time when I didn't have any opportunities. So uh, what I found useful is saying, I'm not ready for this opportunity right now. I've taken on enough opportunities. Come back to me in six months. Uh, you know, I'm probably getting 10 requests a week, uh, an, an estimated guess to be on podcast interviews. And so I'll go back and say, how many subscribers have you got? And if they've got less than 50,000, because I have to make a rule. It's not that I'm some kind of massive superstar, um, but I've got to make a rule. Otherwise, I just throw my time everywhere. So I say, OK, no problem. Come back when you've got 50,000 subscribers and then we'll talk again about doing an interview. And that means that those that don't quite get there, they disappear. And those that do get there, they come back. And of course, they're ready and I'm ready. And, and you know, that's a nice way to keep the good bond and the rapport. Um, because I think that that's important because you know you want to keep the right doors open but of course you've got to shut the right doors as well and say no some people struggle with saying no they don't know how to say no you know they're a bit wimpy wimpy they make excuses people know they're being lied to and that makes it even worse all right so hopefully you found this live useful on um, how basically being too busy is bullshit um, and make sure you're focusing on the right things and make sure you're telling people the truth thanks for tuning in and remember if you don't risk anything you risk everything